This is CPM Pre-Calculus Chapter 3, number 26. So we want to write each of the following rational expressions as simplified single fractions. Okay? That means we want to combine them and just have one fraction. So part A, we're multiplying here. Right? When we're multiplying, that means we just have the numerator multiplied, so it means x plus y times 2x squared y divided by the denominator being multiplied, x, y, times x squared minus y squared. Okay, now we just want to go ahead and simplify this. So what we can see here first is what are the, re the common terms in the numerator and denominator. Well, this one has an x here, and we have an x squared, so this becomes instead of squared just to the 1 power, right? We have a y here that cancels with this y. So let's rewrite that, and that's going to be x plus y times now just 2x divided by, these are all gone, so it's x squared minus y squared. All right? Well, we're not done yet because we can see that the denominator is the difference of squares. So we can rewrite this, right? I'll even write that difference of squares. Difference of two squares, so we could write the denominator in a factored format, right? It's going to be x plus y times x minus y. And why did we do that? Well, that we saw that in the numerator there is an x plus y already, which is now going to cancel out with the x plus y that we just factored. So that's going to equal to 2x over, right? That's what's left over, x minus y, that's what's left over. So examine this. And that is simplified, so that's our single rational uh, expression, so it's just one fraction. All right, let's go on to part B. Part B, we're not multiplying, right? Here we're adding. So that means we need a common denominator, right? Anytime we add or subtract, we need to have a common denominator. In order for us to do that, we're going to have to multiply both of these times what's in the other one. So here we're going to multiply by x minus 2. Then we're going to have a common denominator, but we're going to have to do that in the numerator as well. This one we're going to multiply by x plus 2, but do that in the numerator as well. So remember when we multiply, we're just going to have x minus 2 times 3x over, these are all a big common denominator, so I'm going to write it as x minus 2 times x plus 2, right? Plus, the numerator over here is 2x times x plus 2. Let's go ahead and simplify this. <coughs> um, let's distribute the 3x to both terms. So that's 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times negative 2 is minus 6x. Plus, let's do the same with 2x, 2x squared plus 4x all over, let's leave this for now, x minus 2 times x plus 2. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. So we have a 3x squared and 2x squared, so that's 5x squared minus 6x plus 4x, so it's minus 2x over x minus 2 times x plus 2, right? Well, now what we can do is we can go ahead and distribute the denominator. Let's do that over here, x minus 2, x plus plus 2. Let's use the box method. x times x is x squared, x times negative 2. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. I'm going to put a bubble around that because that's really side work. So that's 5x squared minus 2x over all these added together, x squared minus 2x plus 2x. Oh, I don't even need to write that because I see that they're opposites and they're going to cancel out, right? Minus, <clears throat> minus 4. All right. So my simplified fraction is going to look just like this. And I'm going to box it because I could, yeah, I'm going to box it. And we'll be done. All right, <clears throat> let's finally go to part C. 
Part C, again, we are adding and subtracting, so we need a common denominator. And the hint says to rewrite the second fraction. Okay, so this is the second fraction, so let's rewrite it. So we have x over x minus 1, that's the first one. If I rewrite this, I can rewrite it, right? I can say this is, hmm, I can write it as negative x plus 1, right? That doesn't change anything. I just change the order of the x and the 1. And it's negative x here, so I put the negative with it. That didn't change anything. Um, <clears throat> oh, what I see I can do is I can go ahead and factor out a negative 1 from the denominator. If I factor out a negative 1, I'm going to be left with positive x minus 1, right? If I were to redistribute that, I would get back negative x and a positive 1. So I just factor out a negative 1. I could go ahead and bump this up in the numerator. So that's x over x minus 1 minus, because the negative 1, I can go ahead and put up in the numerators negative 1, right? And that's really the reciprocal of negative 1. Let me write it like that. I can bump this up by going ahead and take the reciprocal in the numerator. Right? I'm going to keep simplifying this. Still, 1 over negative 1 is just negative 1, though. That's why I was saying it earlier that I could just do it like that. And negative 1 times 2 is just negative 2. But now I could have started this already, but I have a common denominator. So I can just say that's equal to x minus the numerator, negative 2, over the common denominator, right? So that's just equal to x plus 2 over the common denominator of x minus 1, all right? And this right here is the simplified fraction, and we're done with this problem, all right? So that ends CPM chapter 3 of pre-calculus number 26.